Hi, so I'm going to talk about how to um, use six colors uh, plus black and white um, to draw an apple um, with a leaf on it. And uh, we're going to combine a variety of different colors together. We're going to use layering and we're going to um, use some blending tools. And along the way, I'm going to just keep on talking a little bit about the other tools that I use on a regular basis. We're also going to do some indenting. So I've got an old pen that I usually use for indenting. And I've started already by doing the graphite drawing of the apple, and I did the leaf. And I always find that if you leave graphite with colored pencil, it often muddies the colored pencil so I like to take a lighter colored pencil so I'm going to be taking this um, cadmium orange uh, from polychromos um, 111 and I'm going to just do a very very quick outline so I've just done an outline and I'm going to do an outline of the stem also and the area the indented area where the stem meets and then I'm going to come in with the green, and and this is a permanent green olive, 167 from Polychromos. And I'm going to just do the outline of the little leaf here. And because we're working with something that's organic in terms of the subject matter, it doesn't have to be 100% precise. Now I find that the best way to actually erase graphite once you've gone over it with the colored pencils is to use a kneaded eraser. Now I don't have my kneaded eraser right now, so I'm just gonna come in with my little Mono Zero Tombow eraser and I'm just going to quickly get rid of most of that graphite and colored pencil, because it has a pigment in it, it has a tendency to stay on the paper a lot better than graphite does. So it doesn't erase the same way that graphite does. So you can actually go over your work. And I usually, if I'm working on one of my larger botanicals, I usually do this in sections. And then I'm just using this very, very soft old watercolor color brush to get rid of the, the little eraser leftovers, just to kind of clean it up a little bit. And I have a bit of erase, or a bit of graphite right here also, and over there. So this is, let's clean it up quite nicely. And I'm working on Stonehenge paper. And I, the paper, this particular Stonehenge is from a roll. And um, it got two sides. And this is the softer side, the one that doesn't have as much tooth showing as the other side does. So you can always check, um, check your paper on what side that you like the most. Okay, so, so now what I'm going to do is using um, my six colors and the six colors I have are three primary three secondary colors and um, I'm going to take the, um, the cadmium yellow again and I'm going to come back so this is cadmium yellow 107 from polychromos and I'm going to do um, what I like to call base layers and so I'm just using semi-contour dry method and scribble method um, to get it on there. And you can see the way that I'm holding my pencil is quite flat. The pencil that is quite pointed still, but if I turn that a little bit, you can see that um, the, the side, this side of the pencil lead is quite flat. And I'm using that in a way to help lay down more color faster and that's kind of what I want so this is this is what I call a base layer and I usually do a couple of base layers and what this does is 
sets up the rest of the color combinations. And this applies to a variety of different things. It applies to uh, warm and cold colors. It applies to complementary, adjacent, and tertiary colors, and how they all work together. So when I'm looking at my subject matter, and I always, whenever I do work for sale, I always work for my own photographs. I never work from someone else's photographs. I look very, very closely at the photograph of the subject matter, and I figure out whether or not it's a warm or a cool color combination. So, here we go. Just like that. Um, the subject matter also has something that's called a cast shadow. So I'm going to put the cast shadow in with this black Prismacolor. And I'm just going to very, very lightly draw it like this. And I'm not even really going to complete that circle because it's going to fade out. When I look at the photograph, it kind of fades out a little bit. Sometimes I'll over exaggerate shadows and that's really okay. So what we're going to be doing today is kind of like that. We're going to be kind of over exaggerating things a little bit. So we did a base layer over everything. Now the next thing I want to set up is areas where there's highlights. And if I reference that photo, the highlights are kind of in this area. And I'm using an orange, the orange colored pencil to get that highlight. There's one over in here, and this one moves kind of in this direction, up like that. And then there's a very small reflection right over in this area here. So I'm just going to circle. That. Okay, so we have areas where the highlights are. We have a cast shadow. We have a leaf. And on the leaf, there's some darks and lights areas. And we have another highlight over in this area. So now what I want to do is I'm going to use an indenting tool because there's little spots on the apple and those spots are kind of yellowy orange. So I'm going to do some indenting in the yellow, but not very many. And then up on the leaf, I'm going to put a little bit of vein on there. And I'm pressing, you know, hard enough to actually see the lines when I'm when I'm drawing but not so hard that it's going to be going right through the paper on the other side. Now why am I using this indenting tool? A lot of colored pencil artists um, use indenting tools to help them get to a place where they don't have to go around all these little tiny circles and also if you don't actually have a white, um, uh, for instance, white ink, or you might have, you know, some some kind of a white method to put white back onto the paper. This is a good way to actually create an area where there's resist. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with the cadmium, the, uh, the polychromos cadmium orange 111, and I'm going to sharpen this. And the sharpeners that I'm going to be using, this is my M and R. Um, which I love. It's very, very heavy and it's solid brass. I really love this, um, this one. And I have replacement blades and I change the blades on these maybe every three days when I'm working on a large drawing. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to do another base layer. So, but this time I'm going to take a little bit more time on doing it. And I'm going to go around the areas where the highlights are. And I'm using, again, a contour drawing method with a bit of scribble. And you can see I'm holding my pencil quite flat. And I'm being quite meticulous about the work I'm doing. I want to fill in the areas, and I don't want to see so much the lines that the pencil is putting down. 
So there's a highlight. I have to go around that highlight. I'll come up and clean that later. Um, remember, you can use an eraser. And that's what a, a kneaded eraser is good for also. You can come in with a kneaded eraser and you can fix those areas by removing some color but not going so far back. So I find kneaded erasers are really good for highlights. And I can show you the, how to do that a little bit later when I get more color on here. So again, I'm using contour dry method. This is contour drawing. It means that you're drawing in the direction of, or in the shape, in the direction of the shape of your subject matter. That's a good way of saying it. There we go. And going over it and a little bit scribbly also. So scribble, contour. Try method. I'm going to bring it up over in here. this side. It's very light right now and I say this is the ugly stage. The ugly stage for colored pencil. So I'm just applying this all over. And you can see a little bit of the the indented areas in here. So now I put down the, the orange. I'm going to come back again with the indenting tool and I'm going to add some more indents because these are going to be orange. And make it pretty random. And with the leaf, I'm going to use my nice sharpener. Now I work with basically three different kinds of sharpeners. I work with a m &R. this one um, is two holes. I work with a long point from Kuhn, and this has the ability to make your pencils super, super long, and you can see it's got two holes in it, two slots. One of them is to um, remove the wood, and the other one is to sharpen the blade, uh, or sorry, the, the lead. So if I demonstrate, that's the way it's supposed to look. And then you sharpen in the second hole and it comes out looking like a little needle point. And then the other comb that I use is this little titanium uh, sharpener. And again, I have replacement blades for these and I don't throw these out because they are relatively expensive and um, they're really good pencil sharpeners. So I don't want to throw those out. I just want to get new blades and replace the blades. So now I'm going to take my green and I'm going to do a base color on top of that yellow very, very quickly with the green. And I have a very long blade on it, so it's, it's quite sharp and it does some really nice edging. And you'll be able to see a little bit of the, the veining that I put in there with the indenting. So I'm just going to come in there and just do an overall color. Okay, so now I'm going to just kind of revisit this area down here, which is the, uh, the cast shadow. And a cast shadow means, um, depending on where your light source is coming from, now the light source is coming from, from this direction in here, coming down this way. So the cast shadow actually should be more this way, like this. 
So I need to just erase, erase this. And I'm going to do this fairly light at this moment. I need to sharpen my Prismacolor. This is a Prismacolor black. Or it doesn't matter what black you're using. Right now I'm just using the Prismacolor black. And I'm going to very lightly just do an edge. And I talk a lot about edging because edging helps to define one area of your subject to another. And a really nice clean edge is really important to distinguish those areas. And I'm going to very, very lightly just pull that cast shadow out. And as I'm moving in away from the apple, I'm gonna go lighter and lighter. And I will come back and darken this up a bit later. But like I said, this is the ugly phase. So I always find that you kind of look at it and go, okay, I want to get out of this phase. I want to get into the pretty phase. Okay. So what we're striving for in this apple, because we're taking a two-dimensional drawing and we want to create a three-dimensional effect. From the, from the photograph, the shadows are not very super strong, but we can see in the photograph that there is a... Um, there's a base shadow, and then there is a reflected, uh, reflected uh, light area just up above that. There's base tone above that that goes into a half tone and something that's called a quarter tone up into the highlights. And tones are simply tones and values. So they're the same thing. They're interchangeable, the same word. Tones and values are about lights and darknesses. So when you say base tone, that means it's going to be one of the darkest areas. In your subject matter, your subject hitting your, um, the area where that subject is sitting on a surface is usually your darkest area. But because you have a reflection area, a reflected light area, your base tone or your base, your tone, your dark tones in this area go lighter for a small strip and I'm going to show you that and then they go back into the base tone again and then back up into half and quarter up into the highlight. So I'm going to sharpen. This is a dark red 225 from Polychromos of Faber Castell and I'll sharpen that up because I'm going to start to get into a little bit more detailing and my edging. So I'm going to edge the apple all the way up and even though there is a bit of a highlight in this area at the top I'm not going to press super hard but you'll see a very very distinct red line and then I'm going to come up over on this side but not all the way up because in the reference image it doesn't have the dark red on the top of the apple. So really good drawing skills is about observational drawing. And I teach a class in observational drawing, actually at, at UVic coming up in September. But I've been teaching observational drawing quite a bit here on Salt Spring and been doing a lot of helping out student artist to understand how to successfully observe the world around them. I'm going to use this orange to finish that curve on the top. And again, I'm edging so I want a super high point and I'm going to put that along the rest of that line at the top. Like that. So the leaf itself has a variegated edge and a variegated edge means it's kind of like razor, these little razors. And I'm going to put those in a little bit later. I'm going to just work on the apple right now. So I'm going to come back with this red and I'm going to start to work with contour drawing. This is a, again contour drawing. 
Contour drawing is following the shape of your subject. And doing this method helps to trick the eye, the viewer eye, into seeing a curve, which creates a more three-dimensional effect. And I'm going relatively slow now with a bit of a light medium pressure. And I'm looking at my reference always. I'm always looking up at my reference image. I've got a highlight area in here. And this is highlight in here. And then it goes to a little bit darker. But I'm going to be pressing relatively light. You can see a lot of the orange and yellow still coming through. And even though this is red in here, I'm just doing a blocking at this moment. I'm going to come back in there. I'm going to put a bit of red, but not as dark as the surrounding area. So as I work further in, I'm going to be a little bit more organic in my drawing, my application of my color, a little bit more scribbly, a little bit of contour as I press a little bit harder. Start off with a little bit of scribble and come in with a bit of contouring. These are all very important skills that are part of good drawing, not only colored pencil, but good drawing with even with graphite or charcoal. edge it up around the leaf and I can edge it with a pretty sharp point because I was doing flat on one side of my pencil and now it's created this ridge and I can just turn my pencil and just edge along that leaf which creates a nice little clean line and then just continue to work the red into the rest of the apple. more contour up but I'm not really pulling it up all the way because that red doesn't go all the way up. If you are looking to do realism with your apple you want to eliminate all indication of line so that's why using this more scribbly method is helpful for that. The contour line method takes a little bit of work to get it right so that you don't have all those very distinct lines. So I'm going to come back and just use a little bit of the contour line in here. Okay, so I've done a fair amount of the of the red. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just edge this area up in here, the rest of the leaf, edge the stem. There's a little area down in here, edge the other part of that stem. 
I'm doing this very light because I don't want the red to be very bold in this area of the of the drawing. Okay, so I'm going to now do a little bit more observation of what's going on on the drawing, um, uh, sorry, on the, on the photo. And I'm going to come back with this orange and I'm going to apply it a little bit heavier over a good part of this image, including some of the highlight area because the highlight is actually not white. So I'm going to bring it down into this reflection area down in here. And you can see those spots quite a bit. And then I'm going to pull it up into the highlight area over in this side. What this is, allows you to do is to be systematic in the application of your colors. You might be thinking, well, why don't you just go into the darker orange? Now, there's a couple of things about color pencil is you really want layers of colors because it creates depth. I have a lot of people who look at my work and they say, oh, you've got lots of depth and color color variety in your work and that's what that's what life is right it's not that's what nature is even with man-made objects glass reflecting there's lots of different kinds of color on there I'm going to add a little bit of the orange to this part of the leaf in here there's a bit of reflection. And I'm going to also add a fair amount of yellow because along this part of that leaf, the underside, there's a lot of yellow. And again, we're going to come back and fix that. And then I'm going to add some more yellow back into this apple. And going over the highlight area, the reflection area and the highlight over here on this side and in particular this area in here there's a lot of yellow so again we're not even working on details at this moment and the stem we're just working on applications of color. So we've used three colors already, green, um, so four colors. But each of these colors we've used two times. So, so far we've done an application of about six layers on this drawing. And this um, paper is taking lots and lots of layers. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm going to start really working on those details. So again, along the edge, this is one of the darker areas, so I'm going to start pressing a little bit harder. But I want a three-dimensional effect, so I want to make sure that I pull as I, as I move up this side of the apple, I'm pressing quite hard, but as I move up into this reflection area, I'm lightening it up, but then I'm going to go dark again, right up above that. And I'll transition that a little bit better later, but there is a, looking at my subject, I keep looking at my, my subject, my image, I keep looking at my image reference, and making sure that my pencil is sharp. There's some very, very dark shadow reflection under here from the leaf. And I'm going to just draw that in. And I will come back with purple and blue 
to emphasize this area a bit. And adding all of these observational details is going to create a more realistic So there's a fair amount of blocking of color still going on right now. I'm not doing an awful lot of blending areas together, but it's, as I block these colors in, they're just getting darker and darker. So I'm pressing a lot more with my color onto the paper. When you are building up your layers, as you are adding more layers on top, generally you want to press a little bit harder. So you're not always pressing the same everywhere on all the layers. As you build up, you're gonna start pressing a little bit harder so that your colors are richer. And that's how you get these more vibrant colors, by pressing harder. So don't be afraid to do that. You don't want pale washed out. You want vibrant to create three-dimensional and realism. So I'm going to sharpen my pencil and I'm going to start looking at these details. Kind of look like this. It's a little bit linear and I'm pulling it as I pull it down I'm joining them together. So they're a little bit linear and spotty towards the edge and you'll notice that they go like this over in this area and I'm not pressing super hard because they're not that dark right over this highlight area, but they are a bit darker as I come down. So I'm looking at this one, it's going to be my main reference, and then I can set other ones based on that. And again, a little bit of artistic license. I look at my subject, but I also play around a little bit. And you can see I'm just using a contour drawing method and just kind of going back and forth and I'm contouring the shape of these details to the shape of the apple. And you can see it's starting to look like it's more three-dimensional by doing that. So if I come back on this side, just draw a little bit of a line. It just gives me a little bit of a reference. Some of them go right down and some of them are quite light, a little bit of dark. Just keep looking at your subject matter. Always look at your subject image or if you're working live with something, always reference it. So I'm constantly looking up away from my drawing, looking at my subject. Again, this is, this is just kind of a little bit of the planning stage. Now I do have a shadow that's right in here and it's got a little bit of this dark and then comes up and there's these little details. And then this comes over like this. And I'm going to just come down on top of the highlight 
because these work right through the highlight and you're going to see what happens. Just don't press too, too hard over the highlight area. And press a little bit harder below that into this reflection area, the light reflection. So back over here. Sharpen my pencil. Keep adding my little details. And I'm working pretty small, pretty small. And I'm kind of this little flip, flip, flip back and forth to get these little details in there. And some of them are a little bit more solid, so I'm just going to come back and fill that in. And bringing that down, all the way down. And flick, 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 back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, relatively fast, like this. And some of them are little lumpy areas, so I'll fill that in a little bit. And I'll keep working around the apple. In this area, I'm going to press a little bit harder so I make sure that I don't lose those details when I keep going over. And in the highlight area, I'm not pressing so hard. Remember? You don't want these colors to overwhelm in the highlight area, but you do want them to be nice and dark or darker in the area where there isn't a lot of highlight. So we've got some really interesting kind of detailing going on with with the apple at this point. And I'm going to keep working. Follow the watch your outline so it doesn't get muddied. Nice and crisp. 